Good evening, everyone, and uh, welcome to tonight's school committee uh, meeting. Please join me in saluting the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. If you could just join me for a moment, for a moment of silence, um, the Brockton Public Schools has lost a longtime educator, a longtime teacher, um, Denise O'Malley, who we all know referred to herself as O'Malley uh, and would yell at me if I said Denise, um, unfortunately passed away last weekend. Um, she worked in the school system for years. She loved kids. Um, she was um, so proud of the fact that she would love to handle the kids that uh, most teachers um, didn't want to deal with or had lost their patience with. Um, she referred to herself as Last Chance O'Malley. She, uh, <laughs> she basically, uh, you know, could, and she could reach kids uh, that uh, were tougher kids. And she would always say to me that, uh, I don't care how big these kids are, I'll talk to them and tell them, come here, you little sweetheart. I'll, uh, you know, you're going to do what I say or you're not going to like what's going to happen. But uh, uh, she was a wonderful person, very unique and um, Brockton's gonna miss her. So if you could just join me in a moment of silence. Thank you all. Okay, our first item on our agenda is the hearing of visitors. At this time, the school committee uh, allots three minutes for persons to bring forth whatever issue they'd like to discuss with the school committee. However, it's really not a discussion. It's, a, it's, it's an opportunity for a person to present the issue on their mind and then the school committee uh, will take the matter under advisement and if need be request uh, more information. So we have two persons that are signed up tonight. Um, we have Michael Sullivan regarding uh, North Middle School. Michael, could you please join us? Good evening. Hi, Michael. How are you? Good. How are you? Good. Um, anyway, my name is Mike Sullivan. I've been teaching in Brockton Public Schools for 17 years. Uh, the last 12 of those years, I've been teaching at North. And the reason I'm speaking to you tonight is out of concern for uh, the plan that was discussed earlier about uh, phasing out north for a few years or shutting it down for a few years for renovations. Please let me just say first, we all agree north needs a lot of renovation. We definitely need a lot of work. Um, my concern is closing the entire school for a couple years to do it. I think there is a way where we could, you know, do it section by section, perhaps not have sixth grade for a year, do some work, then not have a seventh grade for a year, do the work not of eighth grade for a year and do the work and just do it in parts. Uh, personally and respectfully, I think it would be a big mistake uh, to close or phase out North even just for a couple years for two main reasons. One, we are one of uh, the level one schools in the city. That didn't happen by accident. That happened because our staff is made up of teachers, administrators, support staff, who are all focused and working together in teams like a family you know, focusing on what works, changing things when they need to. We all have each other's back. Uh, splitting us up for even a couple of years would ruin that. That would be hard to rebuild. Hard to rebuild the teamwork, hard to rebuild the, the spirit of the school that, uh, you know, has been so successful. So, you know, why mess with success? Uh, and two, I think it will cause more harm district-wide than we realize. Uh, there's no other school on the northern side of the city for our kids. We have 640 students, thereabouts. They, I would assume, I know you're gonna be looking at this, but they're gonna be bused to, I'm assuming, the three other Compass schools. So if you get 640 kids, send them to three different schools, that's an additional 200 some odd kids at you know, schools which I believe are pretty much, you know, they're not empty. There's a lot of kids in there. And also, I mean, I just saw coming over here that the price of gas is going up. Most of our kids at North, they walk there. If they're gonna be going to west or south, or east, they're gonna have to take the bus. And those buses can be expensive, and they're gonna be more expensive a year from now than I believe they are now. Um, also, uh, like I said, I think we could do, 
do this in sections, I think we could uh, modify the plan so that the teachers could teach there, keep some kind of continuity. You'd have to move some teachers over in order to uh, get the job done. But uh, my colleagues here from North, some of us, a lot of us are actually here, and I can tell you we would definitely be willing to be flexible and do what we need to do. This past year, we were actually in the Boston Globe who came to look at us because we had such huge class sizes. And you know, people ask, well, how did you do that? And even I went to the MTA conference, they're like, how did you do that? And it's because we, we rely on each other, we work together, and we have each other's back. So we can definitely come up with a, a better plan than closing the school for, for two years. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, next we have Jenny Miller regarding parental involvement. Hi everybody, how are you? Good evening, how are Good. you? I'm all right. So my name is Jenny Miller and I'm the PTA president at the Raymond Elementary School. And this is my daughter, Bella. Bella, can you say hello to everybody? Hola, mi mommy y Bella Colose. Bella is a part of the UNIDOS program at the Raymond. And we were just informed, me and maybe five other parents were informed about your proposal, Miss Kathy Smith, of moving the UNIDOS program to the George School. I'm not going to beat a dead horse. I'm not going to tell you all the reasons why I think it's a bad idea because you guys already have a decision made. And the reason why I say that is because after getting off the phone with your chief academic uh, advisor for the school, it just, it seemed like you guys already had it set in stone because you want to get more money into the George School and make it into like a magnet school. But the reason why I'm coming to you today is because when there's decisions being made without consulting the parents nor probably notifying us, like I said, there's 50 kids in the kindergarten and 50 kids in the first grade who are in this program. So that means that's 100 kids altogether. So that's 95 parents who don't know that this is going to happen. And I feel like that's very unethical. So when those decisions are being made, I feel as though the public schools don't want parents to be involved. I feel like you don't want to hear our perspectives. You say that our, you, when you make these decisions, you haven't heard my perspective, like our conversation. Remember, Tom, about when I was telling you about how I felt, and you said, well, I haven't heard your perspective. The reason why is because you're not asking parents how they feel. You're not having meetings. And still, we don't know when this inf uh, information meeting is going to happen for the Unidos. Uh, program about them being moved. So as a result, I feel as though parents, including myself, have lost confidence in the Brockton Public Schools with lack of communication, tell, like letting us know at last minute when situations are happening, major situations involving a children's education, such as moving a school. So all I'm asking in return is just to improve your uh, strategic planning when it comes to closing schools, timely notices, implementing new programs for our children, and uh, elevate the awareness when advertising events like your school forums. I've been to your school forums, and maybe there's been five other families there. The one, remember back in, uh, when was it, January? Do you remember, Kathy? It is. It just seemed very small. I feel like if you want a real broad opinion of the families in Brockton, advertise it way better. Like pump it out on Facebook, Twitter, anywhere. I feel like, you know, that's not happening. I couldn't even find a flyer for the parent forum. We put it on our school website. We sent just out a connected message to every single parent in the district informing them of the superintendent forums and our teachers and our staff. That message now goes out text in case people don't get the voicemail, but we do reach out to everybody. I wish people were as motivated as you because I appreciate when you come to those forums, mm -hmm. ask questions and be involved, and I thank you. And I would hope parents out there, again, when we do have a forum, we want each and every one of you to come and to have discussions, especially during you know, times like this. So I thank you for coming. Well, thank you. But the, 
the main reason is, um, you know, half the people don't even know what, who, what their principal's name is for their schools. So when you send out text messages and everything like that, I just feel like it's not reaching the parents either. They're looking at it and not caring, don't know who's calling them, so they let it go to voicemail and don't even check their voicemails. I'm talking about real flyers, like real people connecting, having events with everyone involved. Because the parents that I've talked to feel kind of just like a little pushback. They just don't feel very welcomed, and I don't understand why. I mean, for me, I have high anxiety. It takes a lot for me to come up and talk to you today. And with other parents, I just feel like, A, either they, it's, you know, everyone's working their nine to five and just worrying about getting food on the table, but I feel as though, like, it just needs to be more welcoming, more channels, more publicity when you're having those school forums. I feel like you would have had, like, twice as many families there if there was a little more publicity, like actual flyers, pass them out at schools, put it into the kids, you know, for the safety uh, meeting that you had. That was highly publicized, in my opinion. But I feel like you should do that every time there's something for the parent connection because I feel like losing faith in our school system, I feel as though that you wonder why that you're losing kids to the charter schools is because people have lost faith in the school system. 300 plus kids you're losing, I just, just ask yourselves, why are they going there? You know? I feel like if there was a lot more parent involvement, it would just, it would, you know, cure a lot of our problems that we're facing with today. Thank you. school is her family and she really doesn't want to leave and she finds it very unfair that that has to happen I don't know what's giving her the nerves usually I'm the nervous one <laughs> but she loves the program and she loves her school and we really wish not to move and in the future if you guys could have a more timely notice it would be easier to swallow for our, a lot of families including the north the, the Gilmore the, all those kids that had to be moved just, it seems like all these decisions that you're making is just pushing an agenda. But I am saying, I'm saying it seems like it. I'm not saying you are. I'm saying it seems like you're pushing an agenda. And I feel like if there was more community input and meanings for all the families could combine, it would be easier for people to accept change. It's not that people don't like change. It's the people don't like to be blindsided. So I feel like if we all came together as a community, as Brockton, it takes a village to raise a family, right? So Brockton is my village, and I want all of us to come together and be involved in the decisions and not have decisions made, what, how many weeks until left of school? Four weeks? Four weeks left of school? Yeah? It's just... 29. Thank you. 29 days. Thank you. I just feel as though it would make an impact and be great for us families in Brockton. Thank oh, you, Jenny. No problem. Yeah. I'll, I'll just make one quick comment. Um, you know, the, the, unfortunately, our budget situation for the last five years has been horrible. So there are lots of decisions that unfortunately are being made and have been made in the past and are now need to be made. And I can tell you that nine times out of ten, whoever is affected is not happy. Um, decisions have to be contemplated and financially made in order for the district to go forward, and, it's, and these are not great choices. No one up here is thrilled with the choices that we have to do. Um, but unfortunately, in some instances, um, we do not have the luxury of time um, because of the nature of
the budgeting process, especially when Brockton is involved, because unlike other towns who get their numbers from their select people uh, well in advance, who um, usually do not see budget deficits, taxes go up pretty much every single year in those towns. So planning can be made um, well in advance, but unfortunately, we have a, a budget situation in Brockton and a process that um, you know, does not adhere to that. You know, uh, a gentleman called me today and we were talking, and I said to him, he asked me about um, the reduction in force notices, and he, he said, you know, why are, why are they going out again? And I said, well, you know, again, we're facing a budget deficit. And, you know, when I ask Brocktonians, are you willing to pay more in taxes? Are you willing to, you know, pay a little bit extra? The answer I get nine times out of ten is absolutely not. I, I don't get many people, especially people that don't have children in the school system that are volunteering to raise their, have their taxes raised in order to fund education. So, I mean, believe me, we hear what you're saying. We are out there consistently advocating for more funding at the local level. We have all talked to our city councilors at the state level, at the federal level. Senator Markey was here, Senator Warren was here, We've had conversations with them, and I have conversations with my own friends. And guess what? They're not, they're not thrilled to have their taxes raised. But there is a cost. So, you know, unfortunately, um, you know, we, um, changes are going to have to be made, and it's not change that we really, you know, are here to make. But... Um, you know, please understand that, that no one up here is trying to, you know, make changes to this school or to that school. You know, last year people weren't happy with decisions with regard to, you know, uh, the Gilmore School. And, um, but we try to be careful. We try to, you know, make sure that when the changes are made that, that um, plans are implemented and followed through. With regard to the Gilmore, in retrospect, parents have accepted that move over to the Russell and did say that it was well done, even though they weren't in favor of it. They were very vocal, as you all who pay attention to what goes on every year in the budget. This is calm compared to what we saw last year with the Russell. Um, but again, we all try to be careful in terms of the way plans are implemented. So I can assure you that when changes are made, we do take care to make sure that whatever the change is, is, is will be done in an organized manner. Um, communication is key, and we certainly hear you. Um, but as Brocktonians, we all need to work together. And when you're out there talking to your friends in the community, and they say, you know, talk to you about the budget, you know, please remember to say to them, you know, we all need to invest in education in Brockton because this is the thing that this community has always been proud of. This is, the Brockton Public Schools has always been the crown jewel of Brockton. People outside of Brockton always say you have a great school system. And we do, but, you know, for the last few years, we need some help to maintain it, and we want to improve it. Um, so, again, we hear what everyone's saying, we hear all the concerns, um, and we will, we will whatever, whatever happens, this board, this school committee, will make sure whatever moves are done are done in an orderly, organized, and um, thoughtful manner. So, that's all I can promise. Meeting adjourned? <laughs> no. All right, so next item, uh, consent agenda. 
The consent agenda is the accumulation of routine matters before the school committee. The school committee has an opportunity to review any of those items, have them taken out of order, have them pulled out for further discussion. Is there anyone that um, sees an item on the consent agenda that they would like to remove and discuss as an individual item? No? Okay. Can someone make a motion then to approve the items A through L of the consent agenda? A through L. Thank you. Any further discussion? All in favor? Okay. Communication. Report of the superintendent of school. Superintendent of school. Thank you, Mr. Minichello. So when you do talk about the crown jewels of Brockton, we have a number of crown jewels actually with us this evening. So the first group I would like to introduce uh, is our Brockton High School chorus members. And I think I see them up in that corner. So again, I'm not sure if you heard me mentioning how proud we were just last Wednesday when we had the State Department of Education here going all over the state to see wonderful programs throughout the state in the Leading the Nation campaign. And they told us, and they've contacted me a number of times, that by far, hands down, the best that they saw was here in the Fine Arts Building at Brockton High School. And that's because of all of you in so many different roles that you play. So I'd like to invite uh, Matt Cunningham down to tell us a little bit about this group and invite our award-winning members to come down and be recognized uh, with our school committee. And hopefully we'll be able to take some wonderful pictures to put on our website. Good evening, everyone. Thank you for having us. Uh, so behind me are five students from the Brockton High Concert Choir, and they were accepted into the 2018 American Choral Directors Association Eastern Division Honor Choirs. Uh, it's a tremendous honor, and the organization is the professional organization to which all choral directors belong, from K-12 and community choruses and college choirs, and uh, I belong to that organization, and every year they have conferences, so it rotates between division conferences and national conferences and last year was, well this year rather was the Eastern Division Conference and we had these five students accepted into it they auditioned back in September actually sending in audition tapes and it's a blind audition process so they have no idea where they're coming from they just listen to the voice and they were selected amongst uh, 200 singers from the Eastern Division and there's 11 states in our division that uh, participate and I'm proud to say that Massachusetts has been represented by Brockton High School at all three of the past conferences. We're the only high school to have been at all three of the past conferences. Last year was the National in Minneapolis, and then two years ago was Eastern Division again in Boston. So we're very proud of their accomplishments. They spent four days in Pittsburgh uh, rehearsing under a renowned conductor, and they performed in a concert at Heinz Hall in Pittsburgh. Sure. So we have Mercalli Bursi, John Perdal, Montia Gongpala, Jada Tien, and Rolanda Theodore. And the next crown jewel is our varsity basketball coach, Mr. Robert Bowen, Bob Bowen. I am so privileged as a superintendent to have worked with Bob since the beginning of my career. I know he's been uh, a member of the Brockton Public Schools for over 40 years, uh, a coach for, I'm not exactly sure the number, Bob, of how many years you were coaching. But we were so proud this year that Bob was named the varsity basketball coach from the MIAA 
for the 2017-18 Boys Basketball Coach of the Year. Please join me in congratulating Bob. Thank you. I'm giving you a hug. So let me give you this. First of all, let's give you this. I'm going to have you say a few words. I want to get my glasses off my head. Thank you. Congratulations. Bob, say a few words, please. That's true, that's true. All right, thank you very much. Um, I consider myself very lucky to coach at Brockton High School, of course. Uh, there are many people here that I kind of have to thank. Uh, Superintendent Smith mentioned we started out together and uh, she was actually a cheerleading advisor when I was the JV coach. <laughs> yes, that was 34 years ago, so 34 years, 35 years ago. Uh, I have to thank my principal, uh, Natalie Pohl, who works my schedule around. It's not easy running from the elementary school up to the high school here. Uh, I see Principal Murray was over there. I have to thank him. We had one or two boys who had a little bit of problem this year that he was very helpful in trying to work things out for me. Um, in the back is <laughs> Lori Fisher. <laughs> um, in the reorganization plan, unfortunately, Lori is leaving the George School, which leaves me without a basketball secretary because she does everything for me. She sends in my rosters here. She sends all my things to the Enterprise for the All Scholastic. Um, she does a million things for me. Um, and uh, finally, I guess I have two guys I have to thank here for this, since it's a lifetime award. Uh, Mr. Brett Gormley, who played for me. <laughs> Yes, Brett did. And you did. You always played hard, Brett. And Michael Thomas, who was really a, a leader and a captain of my second JV team, I believe. So I owe it all to them. Thank you very much. Thank you. And indulge me for a minute. I'm going to see if I can get this to come up. And Cheryl promises to save me if it doesn't. <laughs> so Mr. Bowen, he is a very special member of the George School, has a very special place in all of our hearts. And his boxers are a big part of the George School from pep rallies have been held, students will line the hallways to cheer him, they'll make signs, um, but beyond that he does so much more in our building. So this is just a little tribute to Mr. Bowen, just a little glimpse and I promise it'll be quick. So congratulations, Mr. Bowen. You are definitely our coach of the year. Thank you. Thank you. And I can imagine how wonderful it is when basketball players, of course, when you're talking the, the little kids at the George School, seeing the basketball players come in or actually being able to follow such a wonderful team this year. It's, it's, it's a great opportunity to come together as a district. And I'm just going to say one more thing because Mrs. Fisher told me this on the way in. In 40 years, 
absent five days. There should be another special award for that. <laughs> Good stuff. Good stuff. So, so while we're talking about Mr. Bob Bowen, I definitely have to give a shout out to his dad. Because I know, Mr. Bowen, you tell me that you watch the school committee meetings. So this is a shout out to you. We're very proud of your son, Bob. And I would also like to say hello to my old coach, Mr. Bowen. Uh, we, he was my coach for Lions Club and Pony League in, in Brockton. So. Which Mr. Bowen? Mr. Wally Bowen. <laughs> To know Bob is to love Bob. He's one of the, uh, the best people I've known, so I'm very proud to have been when he plays. <laughs> Sorry to get emotional. <laughs> and now we get to go on to another crown jewel in Brockton. So uh, being superintendent the past five years, I remember hearing at the time of one of our very young students who had placed first in wrestling competition. I can't say I know much about wrestling competition, but I was quite impressed back all those years ago. I'm much more impressed now to introduce to you and to talk about one of our senior students who represents so many students out there, so many wonderful, high achieving students. This is Cole Wyman. And let me tell you a little bit about Cole Wyman. Cole, can you join me up here? Cole, I'm going to put you at the microphone to start. And I believe Cole is joined by his uh, coach, Mr. Fentress, yes. Coach Fentress. So happy to have you here. Thank you. And uh, again, Cole is one of our senior students. And three years in a row, he has won the Wrestling State Championships. He is heading to West Point, And he is graduating number third in the class at Boston <laughs> Can you share with us? Uh, hi, everyone. My name is uh, Deshaun Fentress, head coach of the wrestling program. Uh, before I start, there's a lot of special people in here. I just want to say happy Mother's Day to all you mothers in the room. Thank you for everything you do. I really appreciate you all. So um, I've known Cole for, Jesus, it's almost going on 10 years now. Um, mm -hmm. Cole embodies everything that we try to teach our kids in the wrestling program, be disciplined and set goals. Um, this is why this young man's going to West Point, I believe, on a full ride and paying no money out of his mom's pocket. Mm -hmm. um, but Cole, I mean, it takes a village, and I can't take all the credit for coaching Cole. He has a lot of summer coaches that put a lot of work in and a lot of alumni that come back and help. But I'm, it's a pleasure to actually see Cole make it this far in today's, and I can't wait to actually make the Hall of Fame in Brockton. So congrats, buddy. Thank you, Coach. Um. I'm very excited. I mean, this school has given me many opportunities, and I'm thankful to have a coach like Deshaun Fentress. I mean, I think he undersells it. I know there's so many people that have helped me throughout the years, but he's the one who really brings the family together. Oh. Um, that's the great thing about Brockton. There's so many people, and they, already, they always come back because of great people like him. They want to come back, and they want to be a part of his legacy and the legacy of so many other people. Um, another thing I'd love to add, and I think it's timely because um, you mentioned earlier that so many people from other towns um, look at our schools as like amazing places. And I'm actually, for, uh, I live in East Bridgewater. Um, I moved right after, um, at the end of my eighth grade year, and I had a choice. I could move to the other school system a mile down the road, or I could stay in Brockton High School a little more, drive every day. And the choice was one of the easiest in my lives, stay in the school system. The opportunities are endless every day. The teachers here, they always work with you day in and day out. And the coaches, already knowing Fentress for a couple of years, I mean, I knew that was the path. Stay with Brockton and take everything I can get from here. I mean, thanks to all you people for what you do. You made us very proud. Thank you, and could you come up and... All our golden jewels. Okay. And is
is Mr. Shapiro in the audience? He will be here in about 10 minutes. All finishing right. His okay, so I will go back to that. We're really excited to talk about that. I will go back when, when he comes in. So we've got two presentations this evening, actually three. I think I'm going to take this out of order. Uh, do we have Code Connect here? Code Connect, please come up. Lisa, do you want to introduce this? We have Coach Aval. We have that aspect of Aval because he's also an excellent um, travel soccer coach for Brockton Youth Soccer. So um, I wish he was here. Um, I wish he was here, but um, I'll have to make her watch the school. She'll be thrilled to watch the school committee on YouTube. So I'll, ma I'll make her watch it. It'll be homework. <laughs> there you go. So, um, but he does Code Connect, and it's in how many schools do we have it going in? Uh, probably about three or four right now. Okay. Yeah. So I'm aware of the program. Um, I, my daughter isn't part of the program, but I heard about it through his students. Many of the girls on the soccer team are in the program as well. And um, it's a great program, and I think it would be wonderful if we got to kind of grow the program. And that's why um, Aval's here to, to discuss it with us. Okay. Yep. So, thank thank you. you for being here, Aval. Oh, thank you so now, much. Are you doing PowerPoint? Yeah. Okay, we're going to get out of the way for a few minutes. <laughs> Um, while that's going, I just want to say this. It's so refreshing to hear all these great stories today. Uh, it's pretty awesome. Uh, and some great faces, Mrs. Paul. Um, oh, my gosh. Oh, I lost this. Um, anyways, um, I'm missing my right-hand uh, person uh, to me and my daughter. She was supposed to be here with me, but she ended up at the library. Uh, go figure. Um, but part of uh, Code Connect starting um, basically came out of her um, going to a camp and actually loving it in, in Boston. And, um, but knowing that the costs were so exorbitant, exorbitant it, it became a, a, a hindrance for actually to do that more often. So we ended up creating a coding program in Brockton. So I'm gonna <clears throat> kind of walk you through it. I apologize, um, the allergies have gotten the best of me so I don't sound so great right now, but um, I'll do my best and hopefully you guys can hear uh, everything that I'm saying. And loading. Of course, the technology guy has to deal with like the messed up technology. <laughs> um, while we do that, let me just introduce who I am actually, because I hate talking about myself, but I'll do it really quickly. Um, I've, been, uh, I've been in Brockton for more than a decade. Uh, my wife, Letitia, has been born and raised, actually, uh, Superintendent Smith. She is a huge fan of yours, so I have to get an autograph before I leave. Um, <laughs> um, I need fans right now. <laughs> She's still in your corner, trust me. Um, both my kids are uh, 12 and 9. One's at the George and one's at the Bluff Academy. Um, and uh, I've been in technology for over t almost 20 years. I work at a company called Log Me In uh, out of Boston, uh, one of the largest tech companies in Massachusetts right now. Um, and Code Connect is, we've been going on for about two years now. So let's see if we can get this going. Yay! This is awesome. Cool. I'll just tap that and okay. I appreciate your help. Thank you. Um, so, Code Connect is a collaboration of technology folks, uh, collaborators, educators, um, activists that who want to help bridge the tech gap in our community. Um, one of our, our mission is, is primarily to expose and engage underserved youth uh, in dynamic STEM learning experiences and in inspiring the next generation of problem solvers, uh, collaborators, and innovators. Um, our focus mainly is kindergarten through middle school. Uh, we do work with the high school uh, and some of the STEM programs at the high school here and, and being uh, sort of a liaison between um, some of the tech companies in Boston uh, and helping them get either uh, some guidance or even some field trips out of it. Um, but our goal really is to, yeah. Oh, you want to? Almost. Yeah. Um, our goal is, is really to just be sort of the de facto when it comes to STEM. Um, come check us out. We are 501c3 and we are based in Brockton. Uh, this student here is excited about uh, doing some coding. This was actually our first pilot class we did in 2016 uh, at the Brockton Library. They were so gracious to give us space during the uh, April vacation. Uh, we did a pilot. Uh, we got some feedback from parents and we were off and running based off of that. So why are we here? Why do we do what we do? Um, 
jobs for computer science are in ridiculously high demand. Uh, I can test to that because I work uh, in the city. We are looking for people. We're not looking just for people, but we're looking for diverse people, people with different backgrounds. And guess who does that the best? That's here, that's Brockton, that's number one. Um, right now, uh, companies are at the forefront of looking for innovative products, right? And how do you do that when you don't have people that are different? You need people that have different backgrounds and different experiences to provide the best types of products and services that are out there today. Um, computer science and its early ages always provides a path to success around creative problem solving skills. So a lot of the kids that we, we, we have come into our programs, maybe the technology part may not be the best for them, but the actual idea of solving problems is actually something that they have to go through in life and anything that they do in life. So we help the kids with that. Um, what you see down here is a selfie pic of our middle school students that were part of a competition in MIT. I'll talk a little bit about that in, in a second. Um, but we, this is one of the reasons why we're here. We're trying to build some excitement and provide some opportunities for our youth. So what have we done in the last couple years? We've had school events like Hour of Code at the George, at the Angelo, <laughs> and a number of places where we invite parents and uh, families to just come in, bring their kids, and they go through an Hour of Code. And uh, in many cases, we bring some... Uh, software engineers from Boston to come talk about what it's, life, what it's like to have a day in life as a software engineer. Uh, the kids get a really cool kick out of it, uh, and they get a chance to play with some robots too. Um, we, have a, we had a middle school robotics team that plays first place in Massachusetts. Uh, it's part of MIT's NASA's Zero Robotics Program. The coolest part about this was once they won first place in Massachusetts, they were going against other teams like Georgia, West Virginia, even Russia. They actually had their code shipped up to the International Space Station, and real astronauts actually ran their code live stream at MIT. It was a great moment for those kids. Uh, we also had an all-girls coding team finalist, including my daughter, um, which um, with my daughter, and they placed in the final 30 out of two, out of 5,200 uh, robotic teams worldwide. Um, this is a very another very proud moment for us uh, at Code Connect. Uh, we've had a number of after-school programs. We've done some uh, web design programs. We've done some uh, programs around like Python, uh, other robotics, and other engineering type programs, which are really, really, really cool. Uh, and we couldn't do it without the help of some of our uh, public schools, uh, the library, WB Mason, and the DCCE, which is a collaboration of Stonehill College and Harbor One. Uh, we continue to do field trips, movie nights, uh, summer camp, uh, and just to kind of give uh, some perspective around the results of, of what we've done, 94% uh, positive response from our programs between kids and, and parents. Uh, and we've serviced over 150 kids uh, to date. Uh, not going to go through all the names, but these are, some of, these are some of the partners and some of our friends that have helped us get along the way. Uh, Broughton Public Schools, the Broughton Public Library, W. Mason, I mentioned those as well. Um, we can't make, this can't be possible without help from private funding as well as help from the community. So what's next for us? Uh, we're going to continue to work with teachers, uh, help them bring computer science to their schools. I know things are really tough right now, but the kids still deserve every, every bit of education that they can get, and we'll do the best that we can to help service them. So we will partner with teachers. We will provide them, if we can, uh, with robots, or we can provide them with some of our time. Um, again, here's some of the pictures on the, on the bottom right. You'll see some of the kids at the, at the George doing the hour of code. So we're going to continue to do that. <clears throat> we're going to continue to uh, expand our programs, um, do more events, uh, look for uh, coding and, and robotics competitions because we are the city of champs and we will never back down from a fight. So we will always look for competitions wherever possible because once we teach these kids and expose them to something really cool, we want them to apply it. Uh, we have more than just the winter showcase, but uh, we had one this past, uh, this past winter at the Enzo. It was an amazing showcase where the kids actually had a gallery style theme of showing off the work that they've done all, all year. Um, I have a little video I'd like to show you guys at the end of this, if you guys don't mind. It's just two minutes long. Um, and hopefully at some point we'd love to get a permanent space uh, in the heart of Brockton. Uh, just so that we can connect to the community more and not ne necessarily just be about servicing the kids, but potentially 
uh, if there are uh, adults that are looking to potentially look at a career change, uh, providing help or services to, uh, to guide them as well. So I want to thank you, and uh, I'm going to try to do this video. Let's see if this works. Does it look like it's going to work? Can you help me? Next slide. Oh, you're great. <laughs> I'm sorry. This is so cool. So just to give a little context on that last part of the video where everyone's sort of jumping, that was when the kids actually found out that they won, Nash they won Massachusetts and beat out 12 other teams, uh, Newton, Brighton, Brookline, a couple other groups, Worcester and some other places, but we knocked them all out, whatever. <laughs> so they were really excited about that moment, and, and that's when they actually found out that their code was going to be in the ISS, and they would be taking a field trip to MIT, which is cool. <clears throat> Thank you for putting together a wonderful presentation and I'm sure everybody joins me when you look in the faces of those children they know that there are adults that care as they said they're highly motivated they're excited to work together and collaborate all the things that eventually when they get through high school and college and in the field of work that's what makes our kids a success so thank you for really stepping up and bringing something wonderful uh, again, we talk all the time about collaborations and some of the struggles we have. And this is what makes me believe that we will absolutely overcome this. Our children will continue to represent Brockton and themselves in, in such a, a way that uh, their academic success will be noted far and wide. So thank you for giving of yourself and for bringing this to Brockton. No, really thank appreciate you. appreciate it. Thanks. Any questions or? Well, we talked about how you're a coach here and Brockton Soccer, and you just showed us a presentation. But what we don't see and what I know of you is when we talk about our coaches and how they don't just teach our kids sports, and Aval doesn't just teach our kids about coding, 
this is another prime example of somebody who teaches our kids about teamwork and has a positive attitude. And I get to see that from a different aspect, but I know that that is your personality. So I'm sure that that's how, and we can see how happy the children are in these videos. Not only are they learning this, but they're loving it. And that's because of the way that you are introducing it to them and you're making it fun. And I know that you're all about teamwork and positive attitude. So our girls are getting that as well. Our students are getting that as well. They're getting the coding, but they're also getting the value of teamwork, positive attitude, and thank you for that. Thank you so much, Lisa. I appreciate that. Would you make sure that you follow up with me? I'd love to be able to come out and actually see the kids at work and talk about uh, future collaborations. As you said, let's really start to grow this and see if we can bring this to many more students. Absolutely. So I, I appreciate look forward that. to speaking with you. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. And that, I'm, that was beautiful. I mean, that is what it's really all about in the Brockton Public Schools. That's why we all have to work together to try to cobble this budget together and, and that's what we need to preserve for our kids. Those types of opportunities. I mean you saw that basically the joy and the pure happiness on those faces. Um, you know, that's why we all have to work together to get through this because like Coach said, you know, Brockton is a city of champions. We're up, up for a fight. But um, you know, that's a, pic a pure picture of what Brockton's all about. And, um, you know, I think our kids are worth it, and I know that everyone out here thinks our kids are worth it. So, beautiful. I take my hat off to you. Next, next okay. item. Okay, well, item. I see in the house we have uh, Mr. Jonathan Shapiro, our Department Head of Science. I know, he was, I know he was taking note. I see Dr. Dave Mangus in the audience, and I actually see motivated students. So, again, Jonathan, can I invite you down? We had, we had a special event this evening. And I'm sorry we've been behind closed doors with meetings. That's okay, we appreciate what you're doing. Uh, good evening, uh, and thank you for the opportunity to share some of the amazing work that's being done by our students, our teachers, our government, industry, and post-secondary partners. We just came from the graduation ceremony of our apprenticeship challenge, and I want to express my deepest respect and appreciation for the Massachusetts Life Sciences Center as we're here today because of their vision and support. They made it possible for us to teach students the bio, biotechnology content, lab skills, and professional skills needed to be successful in the life sciences industry. Every time I'm in the apprenticeship challenge, I note exactly the same thing, and I mention it to anyone who will listen to me or anyone who will pretend to be listening to me. I say, this is exactly what education should look like. Uh, for at least two and a half hours, and sometimes three and a half, and sometimes four, and however, long, however else long it goes. Um, three days a week, our teachers engaged, challenged, and pushed these talented and dedicated students. They're working in our labs as they will work in labs on the cutting edge of science. They look to each other to gain understanding and solve problems, and have grown tremendously from the experience. As a result of this work, some of our students have already secured paid summer internships at world-class institutions of Mass Biologics, the Forsyth Institute, RAS Labs, Unicus Pharmaceuticals, Massasoit Community College, the Dana-Farber Cancer Institute, Pressure Biosciences, and Stonehill College. Other students are going to find out soon where they're going to be interning. We appreciate all the organizations who will create life-defining opportunities. Um, I do, in this room, I want to thank a couple of people um, Aldo Petronio, thank you so much for all of the help and support that you've given us throughout this uh, endeavor, which was made possible by that $48,000 grant from Mass Life Sciences Center. Um, tonight you're going to hear briefly from Dr. Jackson Grusby, a uh, Brockton High School biotechnology teacher. She and, and Dr. Mangus uh, developed the curriculum and led this program. Um, beyond beyond our initial imagination of what it could be. It really was something special. Um, and then you'll get to hear from Ann Celestin and Aaliyah Gomes, uh, two of the juniors who, who have just completed the program and just graduated from it. So thank you, Dr. Jackson. Uh, good evening. Thank you for taking the time to listen about our program. Um, I just wanted to 
thank um, Mr. Shapiro, Jonathan, also Dr. Mangus, Dave, um, for including me in this endeavor. It's my first year at Brockton High School. I come from an academic background. I've got a PhD in genetics. So I've actually trained um, high school and undergraduate students in a laboratory at both MIT and Harvard. And so I mention this as a comparison to the students that I've worked with over the last two months. Um, the skills and the motivation and the dedication that they've shown e equal, equal students that I worked with at Harvard and MIT. I was thoroughly impressed. Um, this is a program that should make everybody in this room really proud of the work that can be done here. It's a world-class facilities downstairs. Um, it opens doors. We had the Secretary of Labor, somebody from that office at least, um, the, an executive from the Massachusetts Life Science Consortium, and they recognize the investment in this area is really integral for our state and for communities like Brockton to be able to leverage the wealth of resources that our state has in life sciences. This is an opportunity for kids to actually perform cutting edge research. They're at they're at the precipice of being able to step into a laboratory and contribute to real projects. So it was an honor for me to be working with these students. Um, I say to them, like, it's just amazing to me. They came in with a smile, they left with a smile every single day, and they worked solidly throughout the, the entire process. So I'm really proud to say that I've worked with them. Let's hear from them. Thank you so much. What kind of? It's just um, Hi everyone, my name is Ann Celestin and I'm Alia Gomes and throughout this program through um, Massachusetts Life Science Center we were allowed to go over an amazing curriculum over nine weeks and we were able to almost become biotechnology employees and we were instilled with so many great skills and the main focus of our science experiment um, was to express the luciferase gene in E. coli. And can you explain the luciferase? Um, so luciferase is an enzyme which is found in fireflies, so it's what makes them glow. And in the presence of sugar, they, of course, make them glow like we see on the summer night. And this bioluminescence was one of the main things we manipulated, and our method of manipulating and purifying this gene this storytelling gene, as many scientists use to um, show the presence of another gene or enzyme. And through this, we cloned, expressed, and purified. And our first step, cloned, we used restriction digest, which is, we used two different enzymes, and we cut off the specific luciferase gene from a whole nother plasmid, and we also we used polymerase chain reaction, which we multiplied the amount of luciferase we had exponentially. And our next step was expressing 
this luciferase. So to express the luciferase, we introduce a sugar. So with the sugar, we were able to see the luciferase in our tiny little test tube, and we it would um, with our with a machine called a luminometer, we were able to measure how much of the light was being produced. And an uh, important part of this, using the luminometer, this is when we first realized what we were doing was actually working. I remember Dr. J was over and she, we placed in the luminometer and the reading was approximately one billion. That's the amount of light, it, it abs not absorbed, but reflected yeah. almost. And we came into a dark room with Dr. We J. We ran over because it only lasts like 10 seconds. So we went into a little dark room with Dr. J and like closed our, like our hand around the little test tube and we were able to see like a little green light. It was amazing. We finally realized what we were doing actually worked. You know, we work <laughs> in micro pipettes, so small we can't see, but when that, the test tube finally glue, we were extremely excited. And our next step was purification and we did several steps to purify but the main thing that we did was we added we added through let's say through our restriction digest we were able to add a his tag which then we manipulated using nickel and we added nickel beads to our luciferase and through this it binded to the nickel beads and we were able to extract that from a whole bunch of other proteins and then we use, what is it called? <laughs> Some crazy biological term. And it fought with the... Imidazole. 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 <laughs> it fought with the luciferase to get on the nickel beads. And we used a centrifuge. And it spun and it spun and it spun. And the luciferase fell out into a... Uh, fell out. And we were able to extract that and then use... We used the luminometer to get another reading, and which was huge. Yes, the machine could not. The amount of light we had in our final product wasn't able. The machine could not read it, so it was super saturated. So our numbers were a little off because we just had so much light that it, the machine could, could not read it. Insane. But <laughs> overall, the conclusion to this was that this was an amazing opportunity. We learned so many skills, and. I know for me personally, I learned so many things about myself, being able to push myself beyond my boundaries, because I also take multiple classes and staying after for this program sometimes seemed like a drag, but after this, <laughs> it was amazing. Just seeing how much I progressed through this program was an amazing experience. And I completely relate to that. Like, I also do a lot of classes. Um, but like going home after this, at first it was just like, oh, I have a lot of homework. But then like looking back on the experience, I'm like, I'm so happy I did this. And so like now I know like, before I always knew I liked science, but now I really know that I'm like, I'm able to do it and that like, that now I have a foundation in like what I'm gonna do later on in life. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> Ladies, that was an education for all of us, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> very impressive. Yeah. Yeah. Very. What language are you speaking? <laughs> <laughs> Biotech science. I love it. Yeah. And again, thank you uh, to Mr. Shapiro, who continues to bring in grants, collaborators, program. Jonathan, I love hearing from you. Sometimes it's way up here when I'm trying to understand all the things that are happening but I'm so pleased for everything that you do for our department and for our kids, not only at the high school. I know uh, June Saban McGuire has you looking at all the other levels, so the kids coming up are going to have the skills that you need to produce these scientists for years to come. And Dr. Mangus, again, uh, I'm always very excited when I walk in your classes and, and always, it's very serious, but every kid is involved, they're motivated, and again, state with all of the things that we struggle with, we have state-of-the-art opportunities here at Brockton High School. So thank you for all you bring. Thank you very much. Can we take a picture up here? Can we do a picture for the web? Ladies, Dr. Mr. Shapiro, Dr. Mangus, please, everybody come up. What's 
that? Do I have everybody? Are there other students? Is there anybody else? I know you had the graduation and... I don't know where she was. Is that everybody? Thank you very much. Congratulations. Hold on. Well done. Well done. Thank you. Thank, Thank you so much. much. Thank you so much. Very impressed. Thanks, Okay. Mr. Sullivan. Before the two girls leave, I just wanted to say what a great presentation it was. You girls outdid yourselves. You should. You should also be thinking about a grant for public speaking because you did great at it. <laughs> Thank you. Real nice. Thank you. So moving on, uh, I would like to welcome the alternate to Shama Erase, who has been our student council representative. Nathaniel, do you have your microphone on? Do we have you mic'd up? Is he on, Cheryl? <laughs> So Nathaniel, as part of our student report, um, I'd like to invite you to share some of the things happening uh, at Brockton High School. And I know you and I attended quite an event last Thursday I'd like to talk about. Um, yes, well, at Brockton High for the past two weeks, I believe, we've had IB and AP testing. So um, that's taken a lot. And um, for the students who took that testing, it was very hard and long. Um, this week we are seeing a lot of clubs ending as well uh, as the year closes and as seniors leave. This is the seniors last week. Monday is their last day. And um, yeah, the state house trip, that was, that was something. Um, it, was, it was a good experience to be able to represent Brockton and Brockton High and the Brockton school community. Um, and it's also hard to listen at the same time you know, the, um, like things that uh, Mr. Minicello mentioned where we're losing millions of dollars every year um, at, of school funding and it's not fair. And, and you know, just to add to what you're saying uh, and, and I will talk about it at this point in my uh, communication last Thursday we had the opportunity uh, I kiddingly said to Nathaniel it was our rolling rally so we were able to bring 40 students from Brockton High, 20 adults, I believe a number of our school committee members were there, teachers were there, certainly as chaperones. And we were actually invited because of the advocacy that has gone on. And the students were well versed over a number of years. You have watched some of the things that have happened in our schools. And you've voiced concerns. When I come out and listen to you at Brockton High School, you're talking about labs that are larger than they should be. You're talking about large class size. You're talking about wanting more technology. You're talking about curriculum and textbooks and wanting to do so many things that every high school student should have the opportunity to do. So to invite you, when we were actually invited by uh, Senator Sonia Chang Diaz, when we've been watching this Foundation Budget Review Commission recommendations for well over three years. So to have the opportunity to go to the State House. You represented us so well on the State House steps when the reporters who were all over asked if they could speak to students. I was so proud to say, students, which one of you would like to speak? There was nothing planned. You were able to have conversation with the reporters. I know Nathaniel, I believe you were one of them. Yes. We were able to go into the State House. We'd love to take you back for more of a tour. It's, it's such a beautiful, historic place. And I watched all of you when we went in and listened to the Senate introduce the bill, Senate Bill 2325, which is putting forward the recommendations from the Foundation Budget Review Commission. It's about time. And I watched every one of you who sat there listening, understood what that impact would be, not just for your school, our urban district. You know that you are representing students from across the Commonwealth, whether they were in rural or urban or suburban districts. And I, again, couldn't have been prouder than how you represented our school district. So thank you very much. A round of applause, please, for Nathaniel and all the students. Anything else to report? Uh, no. Okay. <laughs> <laughs>
Thank you. Okay, so um, moving on, we do have two other presentations, and again, you'll see some of the wonderful things happening in our district. So I'd like to invite, as Principal Natalie Pohl, you're presenting first on the George School. No PowerPoint? Okay. I don't know if that's on. Um, so thank you for inviting me back. Um, I was asked to come and give an update uh, on school uniforms. I did present uh, to you all last year, and we had talked about um, the process that we had gone through uh, with parent surveys and bringing that to, through our, stu uh, excuse me, our school improvement council. And we had decided to start with an optional uh, school uniform policy for this year and um, we call it a transition year and we had communicated with our families that we would continue to um, conduct surveys um, collect some data and bring it back to our school improvement council um, to make a decision going forward um, so we did that um, we listened to um, many of our parents uh, who suggested the, the ways that we should um, do the survey and how we should collect that information. They wanted to be sure that we had one survey per family. Um, we took time to go through all of those paper surveys, which took a very long time, um, gathered that data, brought it back to School Improvement Council, um, and basically asking the families if they would support a mandatory school uniform policy. Uh, and we did have uh, strong support for that. Um, well over 50% of our families uh, returned the survey, which was um, a very strong turnout for um, surveys. Usually we send things home and we, we get very few back, unfortunately. Um, but this one was a, a great turnout, so that was good. And um, looking at, at, at it through School Improvement Council and Mrs. Silvera, uh, Mr. Silvera's wife, is part of our School Improvement Council. Um, so what we've decided to do is go forward with a little bit of a slower rollout um, and we're going to expand and require school uniforms for our K and our one families. Um, we had 75% of our entire building wearing school uniforms, but especially our K and one. Um, we had, uh, and we continue to have some, st um, some strong support there. So we're gonna start with K and one uh, for next year, remain in transition for grades two through five, and then in future years, uh, roll out to the rest of the building. So that'll give us a little bit more time to communicate with families, uh, especially our incoming families uh, to the George School. Our PTA has been amazing. Um, they've agreed to purchase George School shirts uh, for every incoming kindergartner and for all of our, um, any new students coming to the George School. Our peer leaders have been working on welcome kits and so anybody that transfers into our building um, will be welcomed and, and uh, as, a, as a Jaguar to the George School. Um, so we're excited about that and, um, and we'll continue to keep you um, updated. Do you have any questions for me? Yes. Hi, how are you? Hi, how are you? Good. So you said um, you had over 50% participation. So was it, was the survey just kind of um, like a... For the survey? Yes. Yes. Yeah. So was it kind of a yes or no type of survey? It was the really? same survey that we did the year before. Okay. Um, so we asked the same exact um, questions. And then we, you know, compared um, the data. And the last question was, would you support a mandatory... Um, um, uniform policy at the George School. And I can send you that data if you'd like it. Okay, do you happen to know, I'm sorry. So That's okay. One spot right now on it. But yeah. do you know how, do you recall how many of them did support it? We had well over, oh, I want to say we were close, oh, well over two, in between two and 300 um, that were in the agree or strongly agree category. Okay, and that, what percentage would that kind of? Um, so we have um, 750 families at the George School. Okay, and about 350 were said yes on that? Um, I would say between two and 300. So, um, like I said, I'm sorry, I don't have that specific okay. for it, but I can yeah. get it for you. That would be great, thank you Absolutely. very much. Absolutely. Yeah. And another question would be, so yes. it seems like you're trying to do this responsibly, you're mm -hmm. doing a rollout, yes. but, and did you say that you're going to provide them for the kindergartners coming in? Because my concern would be that the parents coming in mm -hmm. when it's mandated at kindergarten yeah. weren't part of this survey. Correct. So we have provided that information to the Parent Registration Center. So at the point of registration, um, parents are aware 
um, that we do have a uniform policy at the George School, so it's been clear, clearly communicated at the Parent Registration Center. Oh, so they'll know that upon registration? Yes, upon registration. And then the t-shirt the was um, just a nice way to welcome our, our new students to the George School and also, you know, to spread the word about our uniforms as well. But we'll talk about that at orientation nights and things like that as well. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, Mr. Sullivan. Is there any kind of program if there's a student that actually can't afford a uniform? Yes. Yeah. No of official program, but any family who has expressed interest, um, we've provided that, um, whether it be through the PTA or even our guidance counselors have purchased things on their own, and I found out after the fact. But um, if a family expresses need, we will provide them with you know, anything that they need, and that goes for coats and shoes and clothes and you know, um, that's just part of what we do. So absolutely, we would take care of our families. Thank you. And of course, you have two other schools. You have the Raymond School that yes. has a uniform policy. You also have the Gilmore School that's had it for a number of years, very successful. You know, parents have been very pleased. And again, when a principal or a parents show interest, we start to pursue that and we'll continue to do that throughout the district. It was very interesting during School Improvement Council. We were, it was almost a split vote because half wanted the entire building and the other half were like, well, maybe we'll go with a, small, a smaller rollout. So it was, it was very interesting. And I had parents stopping me in the parking lot and um, asking me, why don't we have a mandatory policy? There's a lot of uh, passion around it. So, Well, I think you make a good point that you start it with the new children coming in. Uh, and if other students choose to wear the uniform, and when I come to the George School, there are many students wearing yes. the uniforms. Yes. So I do think it'll be successful, and uh, you know, thank you for all your hard work on this. Thank you. Um, it's a school policy, really. Mr. Sullivan's asking about a motion. Okay. Next, I'd like to invite up uh, Principal Marcia Andrade Serpa, who is going to update us on some happenings at the Angelo School. Marcia is another one. There's never a stone unturned or continues to look for grant funding or ways to uh, certainly resource her students uh, at the Angelo School. It's always good news, Marcia, when you connect with me. I try. Good evening. I would like to just give a shout out to Mr. Silvera, who uh, did do um, two nights with us um, at the Angelo School for some coding nights. And I agree that the families were very excited. Parents looked on with a little surprise at what their students were able to do. Um, and it's just, it's an exciting opportunity for our students. So last time I was here, I shared with you that we, myself, um, and one of my teachers, Julie Perlo, she joined me in writing a small grant uh, for $2,000, and it was for, uh, to purchase uh, engineering as elementary kits. These are kits, engineering kits, that are from the Museum of Science. Um, and if you recall, we were awarded the $2,000. And of course, we use social media to share our excitement. And at that time, we received an anonymous um, communication stating that they were interested in sharing um, or providing a donation to our school because they felt what we were doing was of uh, great import. So we received a check for $10,000, and that was last year. So that was exciting, social media at its best, right? Um, so I had the opportunity um, two weeks ago, or actually just upon two weeks, to meet this anonymous donor, and we shared with her the information or what we've purchased and what we used her funds for. So we bought iPads, we bought robots, lots of robots, we bought Dash and Dots, um, more engineering as elementary kits for our students. We were able to outfit our science um, closet, if you will, uh, with some consumable materials that our teachers were interested in. So we're really, really trying to 
you know, make sure that she's aware that her money went through to good use. Um, and I'm happy to announce that she shared with us that she was handing us another $10,000 for next year. So, yay! Very exciting. <laughs> and it's been 21 years here for me in Brockton, 13 as a principal, and to see Ann Celestin, my former student, the excitement, luciferous, right? That was whoever said that so excitedly. That was impressive. Um, but it's these pivotal moments. These are the moments that are pivotal in students' lives. That is the difference between their interests, their career opportunities, and without these experiences, they may not know what to pursue pursue in life. And we are so eager to make sure that our kids have these experiences. So I have a little team that works with me at the Angelo, uh, Mrs. Sacco, um, Mrs. Perillo, and we're pushing forward uh, looking for more opportunities for our students. Um, we have another grant uh, opportunity in the works. We hope to hear in a few weeks um, if, in fact, we get it. And that's about bringing science scientists to our classrooms and um, again this is just it's so important because without these experiences um, they wouldn't have these opportunities to, to dream and to know that they're successful and they can be successful in science uh, not only for all students but for our girls in science I think it's really critical opportunities for them so um, that's why I'm here, just to share with you some good news. And tonight, I sat here, I got goosebumps. Um, I loved to see these stories. There's a lot of good going on in Brockton. So thank you. Now let me switch to uh, a budget update. We did have our uh, finance subcommittee uh, meeting uh, just before the school committee meeting. So uh, when we last left, uh, the mayor had given us uh, the mayor's budget. It was $159,300,000. Um, our level services budget was over $168 million. I know the mayor, and we're working with city council to continue to identify you know, city funding to support our school budget. That being said, that left us with a uh, shortfall of just over $9 million. You've been working uh, all spring. You have identified uh, savings and reductions uh, of three point, uh, almost $3.9 million, uh, which leaves us uh, a little bit over $5 million at this point. I tell you that I'm very cautiously optimistic, having been in, not, not just talking about the Foundation Budget Review Commission report from the Senate, but also talking about the Senate's budget. So we've looked at the money from the uh, House of Representatives, about another 1.3 million additional for funding in Brockton. That's already been counted into our um, deficit. And what we're also doing at this point is looking at the possibility of 1.8 from the Senate along with another 200,000, which brings us over $2 million. So that being said, we will wait to go through the entire budget process. And I do want you to know that today being May 15th, according to our collective bargaining agreement with the Brockton Education Association, we did have to notify teachers today with a reduction in force notice if we did not anticipate there would be a job in September. That being said, it is very early in the game for us. And although we have to honor that, and we did send out 100 reduction in force notices today, based on, at this point, about 70 actual reductions. And some of that has to do with movement on seniority lists and licensure and certification. There's a lot of moving pieces to this. I am very hopeful that that number will be greatly reduced as we go forward. So again, we'll continue to do our budget uh, finance subcommittee meetings. I will continue to share with you advocacy at every level, including what's coming up at our city budget, Again, working with our mayor and our city councilors, uh, and we will hopefully uh, get this uh, that we can actually manage with some of the decisions uh, we need to make. So um, moving on, um, before we get into subcommittee, and I want to review that, I know um, we do have to take a look at uh, school choice in the district. Um, yeah, it was actually very fortuitous that um, Cole Wyman was here this evening, because basically he's a product of what we're discussing tonight. I didn't tonight. realize that. Uh, I did. So um, the minute he said, I, I'm from East Bridgewater, 
it basically triggered what we did earlier prior to this meeting, and that is the option of school choice, basically providing people from outside of Brockton the opportunity to attend the Brockton Public Schools. And, um, you know, certainly Cole is a um, prime example of someone who see, saw the value, sees the value of coming here to Brockton, and also, so we basically provide him with opportunity, but he also provided us something to be very proud of, and that is, you know, a wonderful student, um, a great athlete, uh, certainly a great academic, being ranked third in the class, and and is going to be attending uh, West Point Military Academy. So, you know, that's what the school choice program is all about. Um, allowing a number of students from outside of the city an opportunity to come in. It basically provides us with, you know, what I consider po very positive exposure. And, and he's really a perfect ambassador of that. Um, so, earlier in the evening, uh, we had to open up and have a public hearing on the issue of whether to continue with school choice as it currently exists in Brockton. Uh, no one uh, chose to speak for or against from the community. There was a discussion amongst the school committee and the superintendent of schools reiterated that she felt that continuing on with the program uh, would not have a negative impact here in the Brockton Public Schools, in particular Brockton High School. So um, the, uh, the hearing was open, the hearing was closed, and there was a brief discussion with the school committee, and then the procedure is that the um, process be adjourned to take place here now with respect to the official vote on school choice. So that is basically the minutes uh, of what occurred at that hearing. So can I have someone uh, approve uh, the minutes with regard to the school choice um, discussion earlier this evening? The minutes. I need a second. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? Okay. And then um, I need someone to make an official motion uh, to continue school choice uh, in its current form for uh, the coming year of 2018 2019. I'll make a motion to continue school choice program for the current year of uh, 2018 2019. Okay. Any further discussion? All in favor? Sorry. I have one question yeah, that um, sure. was brought up. So when we did discuss it, we did get the numbers that um, how many students would come in, how many would have gone out recently. Have those numbers kind of been the same the entire time? Do we know if, they, if we've had any real I, change in those numbers? We have had changes because what happens in surrounding towns is there were towns that did not accept school choice. Okay. And little by little, I mean, I, I don't know, I can remember back when Avon was the only school district surrounding us that chose to do school choice in their district. Slowly, you've seen East Bridgewater, uh, West Bridgewater came on a few years ago. So as that, that happens, those numbers increase. There are parents that choose not for a large urban district, um, a, a smaller uh, district. Um, and there are some students, and I get calls from superintendents, talking about uh, us needing to support some of their students that they feel this is a better environment. They've had some English language learners that they really don't have programs for in a Whitman Hanson and we have had them come to the Brockton Public Schools. So there is some give and take in school choice, but again, the, when you ask about the increase, I think it was towns really accepting choice sometimes for the first time. Okay. That, that was an increase. Our numbers, I think, have been pretty stable. Um, as, as we talked about, a 34, you know, choosing to come to, you know, Brockton High School. Um, and along with, I did mention, it is a form of school choice when we have our teachers that don't necessarily live in the district that choose to bring their children here and educate them in the Brockton Public Schools. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? Okay. Before I go on and finish up with the subcommittee discussion, um, I do want to give kudos this weekend to the spring musical, 9 to 5. Uh, Mr. Bob Hogan, our uh, head of our drama department, um, you know, Vinnie Macrina, our music, uh, Matt Cunningham, who was here earlier this evening, Carol Thomas, who still comes back as a consultant, so many parents, 
uh, so many community members. It was just fabulous. Every year you can't think it gets any better and you get up and, and you look at them up on stage performing, you would truly think you're on Broadway. So congratulations to everybody. I know the people behind the scenes. The scenery was beautiful. All the work that it takes in producing such a wonderful uh, presentation, so nine to five. So congratulations to all of you and congratulations to the Brockton community. I also want to congratulate um, the Mayor's Youth Summit. So that took place last Tuesday. They were well over. Uh, Mr. Gormley was one of the guest speakers. I would say there were close to 200 kids there. Yeah, I'd say that's accurate. You know, taking part in uh, activities and workshops. I want to thank um, School Adjustment Counselor Mara Mello, who actually headed up and co-chaired this with another one of our uh, teachers, uh, Vina Ulysses. They did a wonderful job. Uh, Corin Capiello and uh, representatives from the mayor's office. So we, we were able to come and speak to them you know, talk about, again, what our youth, they do, um, recommendations which the mayor and I do receive. And many times that's where you see summer programs coming about, or opportunities that kids want to have in the Brockton community. You see this very example of our kids going to the State House and representing their interests very well, and that didn't go unnoticed. So thank you uh, to everybody that took part in the Youth Summit. We also today had our uh, nursing students pinning uh, again, a wonderful event. I want to say there were about 20 uh, young uh, students here from Brockton High School who finished their internships, um, finished their coursework, received certificates, and actually uh, had their pinning ceremony. Many of them are going on as nursing students uh, in very prestigious colleges uh, throughout uh, the region. And we will be the beneficiaries of students coming back and hopefully supporting our community. And um, again, you've heard me talk about the Leading the Nation event at Brockton High School last Wednesday. Um, I couldn't have been prouder than our students performing, showing their uh, artwork, uh, performing with the jazz ensemble, uh, also uh, a couple of scenes from nine to five. And I have to tell you, when the young student from Brockton High School, I believe she's a senior from Honduras, in the country four years, did not speak a word of English and talked about the impact of visual arts and what she got from not only coming, she spoke eloquently uh, to representatives from the Department of Education. You had to be impressed with what our students do. So again, thank you to everybody uh, for making this happen for, for so many of our students throughout the district. And I want to finish up with a subcommittee. So um, Mr. Sullivan, you and I were talking. Um, we have presentations on the 29th with project grads. Uh, and also uh, that night we'll be, we will be looking at our middle school options. So that is the evening that you'll be able to be there. And the other um, opportunity that we have for school committee subcommittee is on the 24th of May. And we will be talking about our international school. And you heard uh, Mrs. Miller come up uh, and speak to you during the hearing of visitors. Uh, I waited till this opportunity to share with you that what has happened over the past six years, and I want to remind everybody that it has been the past six years that we worked on a project. It was the school committee, it was the superintendent's office, and it was our Brockton Education Association. And the commitment at that time was to start to develop programs and to develop what we call an international school or a global studies school. That was our goal from day one. We have worked steadfastly. We were very excited uh, a number of years ago when we, would, were, when we were able to bring the UNIDOS program and you heard Bella speak so eloquently this evening when she's showing you the skills that she has learned at the UNIDOS program at the Raymond School. We had consulates come at the time. We were very excited about bringing that program to the Raymond School and the intent was the very next year to bring another program which was our French dual language program also into the district. And I want to remind you, because of a $16 million deficit, we halted doing that a year ago. I did not feel at this point, and we've had discussions about this, that we should halt it any longer, that we should start to bring on the uh, Amite program, along with our UNIDOS program, and along with our uh, Spanish uh, two-way program, which presently is at the George, and to start to talk about developing that global study school which will put us on the map, I think, nationally. We will be probably one of the first you know, urban districts or any district 
and we have worked long and hard on being able to do this. We see great academic success for our students when we allow them all of these opportunities. When we brought international baccalaureate, it was new. It was a little bit of upheaval in schools, but we made the decision to continue, and now you see what it has brought to the district. This is going to be another one of those success stories. So we have to start with having discussions as a school committee. Do we keep them in three different places, or because funding is so tight, do we start to look at providing that, uh, those uh, programs in one school where we can actually provide more supports to them. So that is our discussion. We did have a meeting set for parents so I could go out and have conversations with them, but I want to wait till we get through this process. Maybe this will be a process that'll take more than one year, but I want to remind everybody that when we started this process in 2012, the goal, and it's been talked about many times uh, in programs throughout the district, that our goal is to have an international school or a global studies school. So I look forward to speaking with you about that in the subcommittee uh, on the 24th, and we'll see where we go from there in communicating with parents. I will certainly take uh, Mrs. Miller's uh, suggestions uh, under advisement and try to do a, a much better job of communicating all of these moving pieces to our parents. And that is my uh, presentation this evening. Okay. Any further comments? So we will um, be meeting on the 24th and the 29th with respect to finance? Yes. Okay, so everyone just make sure your calendars are free. Um, anything else? Um, I um, reinforce what the superintendent said about um, the day on the hill that we were up with the students. They were wonderful ambassadors for the Brockton Public Schools. Uh, very proud of them. Very uh, well-spoken, just incredible, um, incredible advocates for all of our students. Um, again, nine to five was great. Another year, another phenomenal, um, another phenomenal performance. You know, I sit there and I say to myself, how do these students memorize all these lines? Um, just very impressive. And um, the singing was really, you know, first, first rate. Um, the voices that we have, and I believe one of the students is a sophomore, so uh, we have a, a couple more years with, um, with, with her performance, uh, performances to come. So going to be very exciting to watch. And um, uh, the, the um, pinning ceremony was very nice. Um, those uh, um, students now will have opportunities to go out and work in hospitals and um, nursing homes and doctor's offices and really provide themselves uh, with an opportunity to um, further their own careers and familiarize themselves with uh, you know the nursing field um, that that is really putting um, you know education uh, into practical um, experience and um, you know just like uh, principal Andrade Serpa said you know this that, that's what this is all about in terms of providing our students with opportunities for exposure, exposure to all these different um, fields, um, exposure to, you know, robotics, exposure to um, programming, coding, um, nursing, um, you know, et cetera, et cetera. I mean, uh, these are the opportunities and um, the doors that create, you know, future whatevers you know our kids want to be because they as a student were able to get introduced to either these people this program this school this opportunity um, and, and that's really what makes um, this school system special because you know we have so many different connections and opportunities in so many different areas that that um, you know our kids will no doubt be successful because of all of the opportunities that exist here in the school. So um, we have that to certainly be proud of. And you were very humble in not mentioning when we talk about nine to five, uh, Greg Minicello, who's graduating soon, <laughs> was part of the Pitt Orchestra. And he, I believe we had some professionals in the orchestra also. He did very well. I have to talk to Mr. McCreener about uh, compensation for the uh, students uh, in the orchestra. The students in the orchestra. I think the others got paid. You know, the adults. So. Oh, I bet they did. Yeah, they, they they've retained me, so I'm going to have to talk to him about that. So. Uh -oh. um, 
but uh, yeah, lots of good things going on in Brockton as usual, you know. Anyone else? Okay, wonderful. Um, Ms. Sullivan, I haven't heard from you tonight. How about a motion to adjourn? Did, did you do unfinished business? Oh, business? sorry. Any unfinished business? Any new business? Any executive session? No. Seeing none. Okay. Second, anyone? Second. All in favor? Thank you for attending. We are adjourned.